Hey Slothnitters, welcome back to part four. Um, by now you should have kept in pattern and knitted your the foot portion of your sock all the way up to about two inches before the desired total overall length of your foot. So, all right. The other thing I want to preface this next tutorial section by saying there was a couple of times where I misspoke and I think I actually misknitted one decrease section. Watch for that. I have put a, a title screen over it um, showing my mistake. Normally when we do a slip slip knit decrease you slip as if to knit, slip as if to knit, and then knit those two together through the back loop basically. Um, I misspoke and said slip as if to purl. I don't know what my problem is except for sleep deprivation. I have corrected it with some screen notes on the video, so pay attention to those. It is slip, slip, knit, slip as if to knit, slip as if to knit, and knit those two together. Okay, here we go. All right, we're at the beginning of the round. And for me, that's at the back are the uh, sole stitches, and then here's the front, okay? And I know that because this is the back of the heel, and then down here is where my original cast on tail was. So this is the beginning of the round for me. And I'm going to begin with a decrease round. All right, so first thing I'm going to do is just knit the first stitch. And then, because we want our decrease to be left leaning, we will do a slip slip knit decrease like we have been doing all along. So knit the first one and then slip as if to purl, slip as if to purl. Put your left needle in underneath. You guys should be a pro at this by now after all those gusset decreases. And then we're just going to knit that off. All right. Now, knit to the end of the needle. And if you're using double points, you're just simply going to knit to the end of the sole stitches. Well, you're not going to knit all the way to the end. Actually, you're going to knit to three stitches before the end. And then, you guessed it, knit two together, knit one. So this is just the paired left and right leaning decreases that we're gonna use to close up the toe. My other video, the customized toe, customizable toe up socks contain the rounded toe and I really much prefer that. So this is my version of that do, knitting cuff down. All right, so now we've knitted to three before the end, so we're just going to knit two together and then knit the last one. All right, adjust your magic loop or your double points or whatever it is that you're doing, and you're just going to do the same thing. So you, you know this is going to be another left-leaning decrease because we want it to lean toward the center. We want it to lean toward the middle of, the, of our work. So knit one, and then again, slip, slip, knit. All right, slip as if to purl, slip as if to purl. You guys are gonna be pros at this by the time you're done with my series here. Knit those together after. All right, knit again till you have three left on your needle. All right, I have knitted straight across here. I am not keeping in the Hermione pattern. I'm gonna have my my toe just be plain stockinette stitch. Um, I don't want to have to try to figure out how to decrease away the patterns. And since this is the sloth series, we're just going to do it simple and straightforward. So rather than continuing the in the Hermione pattern through the toe, we're just going to knit a stockinette toe. So can, so I should have said that. Um, just knit straight across till you get to three before the end. And then just like before, knit two together and then knit the last one. All right, now turn your work. That was round one. So round one is your, whoops, sorry, between the cat and the magic looping and my supply yarn. I have some issues here. Okay, so that was decrease round one. Now we're going to knit two plain rows. So rows two and three will just be straight knitting. I've completed one decrease row and then I've knitted two plain ones. And I can tell that because you can see, you can plainly see this is where I did the slip slip knit left leaning decrease. So that's there. And then I've knitted two plain ones. So now I know it's time for another decrease row. I'm going to do this same sequence three times. I'm going to repeat this row, row sequence three times.
put your left needle in underneath and knit those off. Okay? So three times, I know I've said this again, but three times you're going to do a decrease row, two plain ones, a decrease row, two plain ones, and a decrease row and two plain ones. So for a total of nine rows, and we will have at that point decreased 12 stitches because every time we do a decrease round, we are decreasing by four, okay? So I started out with 72 stitches. You may have started with 64, um, but by the time we're done with these nine rounds, we will have decreased 12. Hopefully that makes sense. As always, be sure to drop a comment if you have if anything any of that's confusing. So I'm going to go ahead and finish my decrease round, do my two plain ones, and then do that row sequence one more time. Okay, I'm finished with that sequence where I decreased one row, knitted two plain wings, plain ones, decrease a row, knit two plain ones, and I've done that sequence three times. As you can see, there's the decreases one, two, three. Now what I'm going to do is carry on in the same way, but instead of knitting two plain ones in between, I'm only going to knit one. So I'm just going to alternate a decrease round and a plain round. Carry on doing that until you have, until you reach the point where you have decreased and you have half your original cast on number of stitches remaining. So for me, I'm going to, I started out with 72 stitches, which is 36 on each needle. I'm going to continue decreasing every other round, alternating with a plain round, until I get down to where I have 18 stitches left on each needle, or 36 in total. Um, I ended with a decrease. I did not end with a plain round. So I, you can. You can knit another plain one if you want to, just because that kind of completes this sequence. Um, but just to recap, you can see what we've done here. We did three of the decreases where we have two plain ones in between. And then we've done one, two, three, four, five, six decrease rounds alternated with a plain one. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to decrease every round. And that's going to close things up much more quickly. Now you can hold this up to your outline of you know, your foot on a piece of paper if you have that. Or you can go ahead and try it on if the person that you're knitting for lives with you. Um, if you need a little extra length, you can go ahead and alternate a few more decrease and plain rounds if you need some extra length. Um, I'm going to go ahead and decrease now every round until I get down to 8 stitches on each needle or 16 in total. I have decreased everything down to the point where I have 8 stitches on each needle. Now I'm going to tell you about two different options here. and you can, You're can you the boss of your knitting so you can decide what you'd like to do. You can just go ahead and continue decreasing down until you have like four stitches on each needle. Then you would simply cut your yarn so you have maybe four to six inches of that. Use your darning needle and just thread the tail end all the way around and through and pull it tight just like you're a purse string. And then poke it down into the tiny little hole that results and you know weave it down into this line somehow on the inside. You can do that if you like, and that's fine. It just kind of cinches everything together at the end and it kind of looks like that. It won't be puckered because you will have decreased down, but if you were to visualize the last four stitches, kind of, it would kind of end up just like pushed together like that. I choose not to do that because I like the way um, the Kitchener grafting stitch, the Kitchener stitch looks. So I'm gonna teach you that, and I have that on another video as well that I'll link to in the upper right hand corner of this video. And I do a kit method of Kitchener stitch that is without the ears. I'm going to trim off 8 or 10 inches and I'm going to go ahead and cut that. Okay, so that's kind of liberating. You're, you know, you're getting down to the end when you cut it free from the skein or from the ball of yarn you've got. Thread that on your darning needle, your tapestry needle. Okay. Now I'm at the beginning, I'm going to hold the sock so I'm at the beginning of my round. And you want to work your magic loop through to where you have both needles on the stitches rather than one on the cable and one on the needle. So your working yarn is coming from the back stitch here. Okay, now the easy way to remember how to do this, well you can write it down. And there's lots of ways to do this, but I like to remember that I'm going to go in as if to knit when the knit side 
or the right side of the work is facing me. So again, if you look this up online, we're skipping the setup rounds. So I go into this first stitch as if to knit. All right, go in as if to knit and make sure you don't catch, make sure you're not catching the back stitch here. So just the front one closest to you as if to knit and go ahead and pull that so your tail is free and give that a little tug, all right? Now, I'm gonna slip that first one off. So I'm just gonna push that and get that off. Now I'm gonna go into the second stitch as if to purl. Now the only time I take a stitch off the needle is when I'm doing the action that corresponds to the side that's facing me. So on this front needle, the only time I'm gonna pop a stitch off is when I'm doing the knit. The purl is gonna stay on, so leave that on, okay? So you knit off, purl on. Now we're gonna work with the back needle. And if you could see inside here, the wrong side or the purl bumps are facing you from this back needle, the purl side or the inside of the sock is what's facing you. So we're gonna go in as if to purl for the first stitch and we're gonna purl it off of the needle. Now make sure that this goes around the outside right and that it's not up and over or in between the needles so we're going to go ahead and purl that off and then go ahead and snug that up a little bit let me get this out of the way here go ahead and give that a little snug tug snug <laughs> and then we're going to go into the second stitch as if to knit now on the back needle that is the opposite of what is actually facing us and so we're not going to take it off we're going to just give it a little tug and leave it there. So that's your pattern. Knit off, purl on, purl off, knit on, on the back needle. All right, so now we're gonna begin again on the front side. And I'm gonna go ahead and draw up my tail a little bit so it's not in my way. So now the correct or the knit side is facing me on this front needle, so I'm gonna go in as if to knit and I'm gonna go ahead and knit it off or go ahead and take it off carefully. Just give that a little push off the needle. And I kind of continually just make little tiny adjustments to adjust where the tip of the needle is compared to the stitches and make sure that I don't accidentally shove a stitch off when I don't mean to. Then I'm gonna go in here as if to purl, being careful not to split anything Okay, I'm gonna go in as if to purl, give that a little tug, and I'm gonna leave it on. Now on the back, I'm gonna go in as if to purl. That's the side that's facing me, the inside of this needle. You can, see the, you can see the purl bumps right there. Those are facing me, so I'm gonna purl, and I'm gonna, that, that's how I know when to remove it. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and pop that off and knit the next one. Go in as if to knit. We're not really knitting the next one because we're not wrapping yarn around there, but we're going in as if to knit. You see what I mean? So we're gonna continue doing this all the way across, all the way across. So let's do a few more, being careful not to actually lose the stitch that we don't mean to. All right, do a few more. You can fast forward if you like, and if you're still slothing along with me, is that a verb, slothing? It is now. If you're still slothing along with me, we'll just do a few more together, okay? So we're gonna go in as if to knit. Go ahead and remove that one. All right, and I give it a little tug after I take it off the needle. Go into the second stitch now as if to purl, and we're gonna leave that one on. Purl on. All right, pardon my big hands in front of the camera. Okay, now the back one we're gonna purl off. We're gonna remove that one, and we're going to knit, go in as if to knit, and leave that one on. Now I mash my needles back through and make sure I don't lose anything. And we have five stitches left on each needle. All right, and you can see how that's, that's sewing up our end, and I'll show you when we get to the end, it makes a very nice finish that actually looks as if you've just carried on knitting up and over the top. It is seamless, and we are making what will appear to be Knitting stitches, we're just sewing these knit stitches by hand, in effect. So I knitted one off and I'm purling that one and leaving it on. 
in as if to purl, take that one off, in as if to knit, and leave that one on. I'm gonna give that a little tug. There we go. All right. Readjust your needles as you need to. And then go in here again as if to knit. Knit that one off. Next one, purl it, leave it on. And the back needle is purl, off, knit, leave it on. All right, we're getting down to it now. Whoops, 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 I'm about to lose my tail off my needle there. Okay, all right, knit that off carefully. Leave this one on. Whoops, just make sure you, this needs to go around the outside, not in between. Yes, it is a little awkward and fiddly. Some of you have teased me for using that word, but you know, it's, it fits. So it is a little awkward and it is a little fiddly, but as with anything, the extra effort I think makes it worth it. It makes a very nice finish. And it's a good skill to know how to graft the grafting method here. Now that's going to be a leave it on, but see what I've done here is there. I had the uh, yarn going through the center of the needles instead of around the outside. So all right, we're getting to the last couple of stitches here and it is not as difficult as you think to finish up. We're just going to knit that one off like we have been. Purl and leave this one on like always. Now that's a little bit tight there at the end. That's okay. I've got it. All right, pearl that one, leave it on. Oh, I got wayward away on the frame of the camera, my apologies. All right, pearl this one off carefully since we just have only a couple stitches left. Knit this one on. All right, around the outside though, not through the middle. Okay, now we've down to the end here and normally we would just go ahead and knit this one off and we're not gonna divert from our pattern just because we're at the end, we're still gonna finish up the way we've been going all along. So we knit that off and we don't have anything to purl to leave on. So then we're just gonna go in as if to purl here and purl that off and we're done. Now this looks a little bit loose and funny here for a moment at the end. What I like to do is just kind of get everything a nice little stretch and a tug and at the end here, let me wait for the camera to focus. I'm going to tuck my needle down in next to this stitch. Here, let me turn this around and show you. I'm going to tuck my needle down inside the sock right there and I'm going to pull that tail through on, on the inside. I'll turn the sock inside out and show you how I do that. But what I want you to see also is this looks really really good it it's grafted that seam together now all right i'm going to turn my sock inside out and i'm going to grab a hold of that that needle that i poked in being careful not to you know poke any other stitches or anything on the inside i don't want to split any stitches or anything on the inside let me all right and i'm going to just draw that through now i'm going to take a moment and decide you can see the side seams and you can feel them. I will just choose a place to weave, weave that down in, but just because these are socks and we are kind of hard on things here on the farm, I'll go in underneath a stitch or two. Whoops. All right, I like to go in underneath a stitch or two and kind of just do a little overhand knot basically to secure everything up and I make sure I work that all the way down now after I do that and tighten it up again like I just mentioned I just pick a place to weave in the tail so that it's not visible from the outside so I'll do that in here just a moment but what I want to show you let me go ahead and turn this back around and I'll show you how when we did that when we tucked that in and made pulled the tail through to the inside that pretty much got rid of the pokey, pokey ear that I had over here. Okay, so that's a nice rounded toe. 
you can control the speed at which you decrease and if you want to make it even more rounded you can omit some of these gradual decreases here go ahead and knit that up and then decrease even faster to make it more of a box or make it more rounded you can certainly experiment with that depending on you know the anatomy of the person you're knitting for if they have pointy toes or they don't or they have a wider forefoot and a you know longer wider toes um, but that's kind of the method I've worked out that I prefer and again like I mentioned to you I will put some notes down below in the video description but we have pretty well finished our pair well not the pair we finished one of the Hermione's everyday socks using our sloth method that's lovely so my daughter kind of likes the how it gradually changed colors to make it dark now I will preview I'll show you I've been knitting along on the second one as well so I'm at the point where all I need to do there is finish the toe on my second one as well now what's interesting about this skein is this is all from one skein of yarn I knitted from the inside and the outside and you can kind of, well you can see the dark inside there and this is kind of fraternal twins that's what she wanted and that's how it ended up so the toe on this one will light, lighten up a little bit but she's gonna have fraternal twin socks and she's pretty happy about that so okay I will show you this one too when it's done and um, I'll put a slide or a picture of that when it's finished and as well as on my Ravelry project page all right well done so you've done it you have finished sock number one and maybe while you've been waiting on alternate weeks for the next part of this tutorial series to come out you've actually knitted sock number two so as that's what I've done and now all I have to do is go finish the toe on sock number two and then I'll be done with my pair so I'm pretty happy with the way these turned out show me your finished pair of socks or even just your finished first sock um, either in the comments below or in the Facebook group comments or also on the Ravelry group. You can find me in any of those places. So as always, thanks for watching. If you found these videos to be helpful, like and subscribe. I really appreciate that. All right, thanks. Have a wonderful weekend.